Confession. I hear voices in my head. I hear them first thing in the morning, all through the day, and last thing at night. Sometimes very clear and sometimes blurry in the back of my head. Now, I know what you might think. Well, come on, Daniel. These are your thoughts. This is what thinking feels like. You should be used to that by now. And indeed, I was. Actually, I'm still too used to it, unfortunately. But why unfortunately? How could thinking be a bad thing? Because what we all hear are not just innocent thoughts. Those are voices with agendas, their own agendas, agendas we might not really agree to. And still they affect our decisions. We don't always make our own decisions. Sometimes these voices make decisions for us, decisions we don't like, decisions we don't agree to, decisions we suffer the consequences of. Being aware of our voices and knowing why we think what we think is the first important step towards making better and bolder decisions ourselves. Now, I remember very clearly when I discovered these voices and their enormous potential to sabotage me. As part of a challenge, I started taking cold showers a while back. I know, why would I do that? Legit question. Well, the cold helps revitalize key physiological processes. Sustained cold exposure results in a lower baseline heart rate, which reduces stress on your blood vessels and in turn decreases risk of cardiovascular problems. <laughs> in short, the cold is really good for us. Now, this got me quite excited, and after my first cold shower, I felt really energized and also weirdly proud. However, the next time I stepped in the shower with the honest to God intention of turning the water cold again, I didn't. I literally talked myself out of it. I don't have to do this for every shower. It's cold outside. I don't want to risk getting sick. I'll make an exception today, but tomorrow, tomorrow I'll do it even longer. If you think of yourself as a rational person who's in control, think again. Because according to science, we're not. We're actually far from it. Throughout our evolution, our brain had and still has one main task, to secure our survival. And in order to do so, it needs to save energy so that in times of need, we can actually you know, fight that saber tooth or whatever it might be these days. In every moment, our brain is trying to save energy. You focusing on what I'm saying right now costs some degree of mental effort, and by that, precious energy. So, what is one of our brain's biggest energy saver? Let me ask you this. Why are you sitting specifically in that spot? Why exactly there? I mean, maybe not too far in the front, nor in the back, maybe on the side, so you can easily get up. Where can you hear and see best? And I don't know, what about the lights and the air circulation? The chances are you didn't give it too much thought. Similar to most of the decisions we make on a daily basis. By the time we are 30, most of our daily activities are run by automated programs. We get up in the morning on the same side of the bed, do the same morning routine, toilet shower, brushing teeth. We take the same route to work and we see the same people. A big part of who we are is a memorized set of behavior and subconscious habits that run like a program, which is really great for our brain because it can just automate the whole thing and save a lot of energy. But it's a problem for us. Not only do we lose our free will to a program, we're also missing out on a big part of our life. In the end, it's not what we do once in a while that shapes our life, right? It's what we do consistently, day after day after day. 
Which is why we have to be more aware of these things, of these decisions made by the voices in our head again and again. I learned how hard it can be to change an automated program. Showering is really one of the most automated activities. I would say, next time you shower, think of me, but I know that would be kind of weird. <laughs> Some days, I found myself long out of the shower on my way to work when it hit me. I had unconsciously skipped my challenge again. It took time and effort to reprogram my old habit with a better one. Now, some changes might be easy. Others take effort and can be quite challenging. The problem then is we're naturally wired to avoid challenge and discomfort. I mean, why are we tempted to talk ourselves out of challenging situations? May it be a cold shower, a diet, a run, a daring question, a tough conversation, or generally facing our fears. Our natural, ancient survival instinct still resonates everywhere. I mean, even for me right now, standing up here slightly outside of my comfort zone. Even though challenging and uncomfortable activities are also often the most rewarding in the end, right? Nothing great ever happens in the comfort zone. But at the same time, our brain is seeking safety. And what's more safe than being comfortable? Nothing great ever happens in the comfort zone, yet that's exactly where our brain tries to keep us. In that way, our brain, with those rational and smart-sounding voices, can stand between us and true progress and improvement when facing challenges. We can actually be motivated all we want. Motivation will get us to do challenging things a couple of times. But in the end, it's how we manage the voices in our head because eventually, they will try to get us back in the comfort zone. So what should we then rely on, if not motivation? Exactly, conversion rate optimization. Conversion rate optimization is the key for long-term endurance when facing challenges. Let me explain. A while back, I decided to get rid of my bad habit of overusing the snooze button in the morning. <clears throat> Motivation got me to one successful conversion, which means I didn't snooze one morning, but the mornings after, I snoozed again. Conversion rate optimization got me to the point where I quit snoozing for good. It took me three weeks of optimizing. I went from louder alarms to having to shake my phone to solving math problems on an app and doing other weird exercises in order for the alarm to shut up <laughs> to the final solution, a barcode in my bathroom next to my toothbrush <laughs> that I need to scan in order for the alarm to go silent. But no shame. Let's not beat ourselves up if we didn't go running in the morning like we so enthusiastically had planned the evening before. Let's blame our biology and then optimize from there. Let's fail fast, fail often, and most importantly, fail forward. I want to leave you with this. We are naturally risk averse. Our brain can make leaving the comfort zone hard by questioning our motives, doubting the added value, and showing us the worst case scenarios of facing a challenge. And that's okay. It does it with the best intentions, saving energy and keeping us safe in that moment. But for our long-term well-being, we need to be aware of what's going on in our head and why. We need to reprogram our automated habits by trial and error and failing forward. And we need to consciously step out of our comfort zone every once in a while by ignoring the voices. But let's not just start taking cold showers, although you really should. Let's 
try truly unfamiliar things. Let's engage with people we haven't met before. Let's get new input and new insights so we can see ourselves and our beliefs through new eyes. And what greater opportunity than to start here, today. Let's all agree on this. Today, everybody in here and I will try to fight our own brain. We will prove we are stronger than our own brain by doing something really dangerous. Talking to a stranger. <laughs> we will approach at least one person on this festival we have never met before. Our brain might tell us no, come up with excuses like, what am I going to say? It might be weird. Why should I listen to a German? <laughs> and, what, and whatever other excuses. But we will not fall for any of them. Take a close look at those excuses you come up with and see them for what they really are. The concerns of an overprotective, ancient friend. Thank you.